Something big is about to happen in the Canadian real estate market, even as housing prices continue to fall for like the 329th month in a row and prices are down more than 10% off of their peak. But sales in October were up by 1.3%, leading the Canadian Real Estate Association's economists to suggest that the slowdown in the housing market is starting to wind down, which led pretty much every other economist in the country to literally laugh out loud. But before we get into the details, if you're new here and you want to thrive financially, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. And if you end up liking this video, hit the like button so more people like you can see it. All right, so let's get into it. Let's discuss what's going on in the housing market. I want to jump you into the headlines here. This is from BNN Bloomberg. Canadian home prices fall again, now down 10% from the peak. This was in February. And there's a whole bunch of really great information in this article, which I'm going to get to in a minute. And I'm also going to dive into the HPI and show you what's exactly happening with housing prices across the country. But I want to show you this somewhat hilarious quote from CREA, the Canadian Real Estate Association's senior economist. His name is Sean Cathcart. And he said this, October provided another month's worth of data suggesting the slowdown in Canadian housing markets is winding up, which is absolutely hilarious, primarily because one month does not equal a trend. This is literally one month where sales have turned around. Obviously, we came out of summer. We saw a lot of uncertainty in September, and we're starting to see a few people start to dip their toes back into the market. But that doesn't mean that the slowdown in housing prices is coming to an end. And this led to a BMO economist, Robert Kavsik, saying there's not much here to suggest that the market is turning around. And there really isn't. Other than one month of slightly increased sales, there's still quite a bit of bandwidth here for the market to go down. And Kavsik here is suggesting that they could go down up to another 20%, which would make sense given that the qualifying rates are now about 2% higher than they were last year, which would suggest about a 20% headwind in buying power and therefore potentially a 20% reduction in housing prices. Now, before we get into the actual HPI index stuff, there's a couple of things I want to point out here real quick. First and foremost, there's been a couple of videos with respect to a private lender in Canada over the last couple of days, suggesting that private lenders were in a significant amount of trouble and that the issues at Robson were an indicator that things were going to go bad. They suggested that a lender called Robson, who is a big commercial lender, they do development and construction loans, was not being repaid by typical homeowners or borrowers that had borrowed private funds. Well, Robson, that particular lender, does not lend it to typical consumers. So you can't take what's happening in the real estate market with respect to people not buying new homes and therefore developers not being able to pay their private lender, Robson, as an indicator that homeowners aren't able to make their payments. Because as of right now, pretty much everybody in Canada has qualified at 5% or higher for their mortgages. And even the people in the worst case scenario with variable rate mortgages are now paying about 5% on their mortgages, which is what they qualified at. So most people can still, by traditional means, qualify for their mortgages. So you pretty much have to ignore those videos that talk about consumers not paying Robson back their mortgage payments because Robson doesn't lend to consumers. That just doesn't happen. In fact, the typical mortgage at that lender is over $20 million. It is developers and people who are doing, doing construction who aren't able to sell the pre-sales that aren't paying back that lender. So keep that in mind when you see those articles. The other thing here that we're seeing is that people are starting to dip their toes back into the market. Obviously, October's numbers were up 1.3%. That's an indicator that people are starting to kind of get back into the market. It doesn't mean things have totally gone back to normal, but we are seeing a lot of people who are jumping back into the market. And the key thing that we learned from the pandemic in the last couple of years is that the only way to save yourself from making really bad decisions is to be really well educated. So we put together our home buyer masterclass in order to make sure that consumers have the information they need in order to not make bad decisions, like getting into bidding wars on houses and paying two to $300,000 more than they're going to be worth a year or two down the road. So we talk a lot about how to evaluate a market. We talk about how to evaluate your current situation and whether or not it makes sense for you to be buying in the market that you're in. So if you're interested in that, go to homebuyermasterclass.ca. It's priced super cheap and you get 10 times your money back just for signing up for the course if you end up choosing Mortgage 360 for your mortgage. So make sure you check that out. Now, I want to jump back in here and I want to show you the actual stats with respect to what's going on in the housing market with respect to prices. Because like I've talked about in other videos here, this is a tale of two markets. Actually, it's a tale of three markets. It's Vancouver, Toronto, 
and everywhere else. And it's really hard to take articles from an organization like Korea at face value because they talk about the country as a whole. For example, they're talking about home values being around $750,000 for the benchmark price. Now, if you go ahead and you take a look at home values across Canada, what you can see is we have two markets, actually three if you add Victoria in here, that are well over a million dollars. Then when you start to get into the $750,000 range, there's no markets that are actually being priced in that range, at least not that I can tell. And then you start getting into places like Ottawa, and Calgary, and Halifax, and Saskatchewan, and these are the markets that are all well under $550,000 in price. So really what's happening here is we have two markets that are pulling up the national average. They're also bringing down that number with respect to how much housing prices have decreased quite significantly, because these are the two markets that saw the biggest level of insanity when it came to bidding wars. If you look at other markets, like for example, if you look at Calgary, which is the teal line, housing prices in Calgary are still very close to where they were in February. And if you take a look at the similar sort of market like Montreal on the other side of the country, well, Montreal's prices are still very similar to where they were at the beginning of the year. And basically what we're seeing here is we're seeing this trend where markets that are reasonably priced are still faring pretty well even as interest rates start to rise. But when you take a look at Toronto, Toronto is down. Vancouver's down probably about 10% here. And things in those two markets are weighing heavily on the markets across the country when we look at national statistics. And I really do feel for people who bought in those two markets over the last year because they did pay substantially more than what their houses are worth right now, especially if they bought in the early months of 2022. But there's a couple of really big things that are about to happen in the Canadian real estate market that we all need to be paying attention to. First and foremost, the big one, and this is something that not a lot of people are paying attention to, is immigration. We've got massive immigration numbers. 256,000 people added to the country in the second quarter of 2022. I'm going to guess that this number is going to be higher in the third quarter and it's going to continue to go up. And what you have to keep in mind is that every single new immigrant to Canada is somebody who is going to be competing for housing, whether that's in the rental market or whether that's in the purchasing market. And a lot of people who are immigrating to Canada, who are being allowed to immigrate to Canada, are very well educated, and very employable, which means the runway to buying a home for many of them is actually quite short. So these people are going to create a floor for the Canadian real estate market. And by the way, these people are also very much needed with respect to growth in our economy and continued prosperity in Canada. And before anybody gets in the comments and starts disparaging immigration, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do it. Because quite simply, it's just not a good look. But then there's one other thing that's happening that is really interesting. And that is the suggestion that the majority of Canadians are in favor of taxing homes over a million dollars, especially if those taxes are used in order to bring down the tax rates for lower income people. Now, here's the big problem with that. So taxing houses over a million dollars would basically create more activity in that sub million dollar range. Now, here's the bigger thing is it basically targets two markets. It targets Vancouver and Toronto. Vancouver's and British Columbia, their taxes are already high enough, let alone their municipal taxes. And combined with Toronto's land transfer taxes and everything else going on there, this just isn't feasible. Now what's interesting is the provinces where this is most supported are the provinces that, surprise, surprise, don't have a lot of million dollar homes. Atlantic Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Alberta. So there isn't a lot of broad support for this and there won't be in those markets like Vancouver and Toronto, which have a large amount of voting power and in which the federal government would lose a significant amount of votes if they were to implement this type of tax. So don't expect that to happen. But with respect to the big thing that's happening and what we're seeing in our small little market share of our mortgage company, Mortgage 360, what we're seeing is we are starting to see home buyers accept the fact that 5% interest rates are here and they're here to stay. And those people that haven't bought a home already are seeing buying opportunities and they're wading into the market. In fact, we did not plan for the number of transactions that we are seeing in the month of November. So my guess is that next month we'll probably see higher sales numbers than in October, but I do expect that we are going to continue to see housing prices come down at least for the next three or four months. We are going to get that support via immigration for housing prices. But with certainty, the end of the slowdown is not here. One month, like I said, is not an indicator. There are going to be many people who take advantage of the lower prices, and I applaud them, even when looking in the face of slightly higher interest rates. Oh, and the Bank of Canada probably isn't going to increase interest rates by as much as expected at their December meeting. And if the Federal Reserve in the U.S. is any indication, they're looking to slow down their interest rate increases as well.
So if you found this video useful, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know a little bit more about how, why housing prices in Canada probably aren't going to crash, check out this video right here.